so uh, right now we decided to uh, take out some walls and do the demo work in the house, so we're pretty excited about that. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be opening up walls. Now, when you're doing your demo work, keep in mind, uh, you should always have a safety uh, hard hat, safety glasses, gloves is a good idea. All right. Now, before you start taking things apart and ripping things apart like we have, uh, there's a few things that you should double check to make sure. Uh, if you've got an electrician to come over to check your panel um, to make sure the uh, uh, you can turn your breakers off or your uh, main switch off, your main uh, hydro uh, breaker off to make sure there's no power coming into the house because you know when you're ripping apart you don't want to get uh, hit any electrical lines that are live. Make sure your water's turned off because you're going to start cutting things and ripping things apart. Uh, you don't want to all of a sudden uh, <coughs> hit a water line, got water all over, water all over the place. So make sure that's done, and also make sure uh, if you're using sawzels to cut things, um, make sure your gas lines off, your uh, main gas at your uh, uh, in your house. Uh, make sure that's turned off just in case you do uh, hit one of those. So uh, hydro disconnected, uh, water disconnected and gas turned off. Well, what I mean disconnected, just turned off. So make sure that's all done. And when you're doing demos, as I say, uh, try and take things apart as you think they were put on last. It's a little easier to do that way and just start ripping things apart. And it's always good to have a dust mask. Um, and before you start ripping things apart too, double check to make sure there's no hazard, hazardous materials <clears throat> in the house itself. Um, depending on the age of the house, um, you may have come across some asbestos uh, or some vermicul vermiculite in the attic. Um, if you do come across that or you think or you have suspicions of that, you should always double check and get a professional to do a test on that. All right, so let's, uh, let's start ripping the cut kitchen apart and continue on what we're doing. All right, so as I say, when you're doing, doing demo work, hard hat, safety glasses, oh, Always try and wear a dust mask whenever you can. Right now we're, it's, we're not working too much dust, so we're not, I don't have one on, but, um, but, but it's always a good idea to have that too. So let's just start ripping apart. As you can see, we've already ripped some of this down. And we're not keeping these covered, so just to start. There we go, that's going in the bin. Oh, and make sure you have a bin here to uh, throw all the uh, garbage as you're going along, all right? And then uh, we're going to start smashing stuff down. So, now let's rip these doors off first and we'll start smashing the covers down. There's another one. And... Another one. Well, this one I don't even need. This one I don't need. This is my camera. Just brute pushes, I guess. Mike, where's that sledgehammer? Here's the big one. Great, thank you. All right. Now, whenever you're smashing things, make sure nothing falls from uh, from above. So uh, keep that in mind. steel toes on them just in case something falls on your foot and you got a big uh, <coughs> big busted toe so keep that in mind too. Shake it a little bit if you can, because drywall will come off in sheets. So, like for instance, when you're doing this one here, you know the sheets coming up <coughs> more likely put on a full sheet like this. So if you get it started, <coughs> excuse me, well, this was 
was not really what I wanted to do. Keep, keep continue on and we'll see how it goes. Well, uh, hold on one second there, Justin. Yep. All right, so as you can see, we've uh, opened up the drywall and uh, exposed our, our walls now. A good idea is if you're going to be uh, renovating the house or moving some walls around, if you can get a hold of the original as-built blueprints when the house was built, um, it's a good idea if you can get that because that will basically should give you an idea or should tell you where the load-bearing walls are and what walls you can remove and what walls you can't. What I mean by that is it will show you on the blueprint which walls are structural. Now in our case, uh, if you go to your municipality, uh, in some municipalities, um, the, they will give you the blueprints that were submitted when the house was built. Now in our case, uh, they do in most cases, uh, but for some reason they couldn't find them, so uh, we didn't have that luxury of having a blueprint. So now that we've opened up the walls, um, either yourself if you're experienced, or a good frame carpenter, or an engineer can tell you uh, which walls are going to be low bearing or not. Now, in our case, um, I've already had a meeting with the engineer and he's already been here. And so I'm going to go over a few things that we've discovered to, uh, uh, I'm going to point them out to you and then you can get a pretty good idea of uh, if it looks similar to you, your uh, situation or not. So I'll point out the simple ones first. So come on over here, Mike. Okay, so if you can look up at the floor joints here, all right, you can see that they're going um, from end or side to side or end to front, whatever you want to call it, um, where they're they're always load bearing on the outside wall usually. So this side is load bearing, and all of a sudden they stop here. So obviously this wall is a load bearing. Whenever the floor joists are perpendicular to a wall or a beam, 90% uh, of the time they're load bearing. So we know they're load bearing here. And if we move over here, all of a sudden the floor joists in the second floor are changing directions. So they're load bearing on the outside wall here, and then here you'll see that they're perpendicular, perpendicular to this wall, and here there's a header, and the header is is acting as a as a support wall like this one is right at this point right here in this opening. So this wall is a load bearing wall. So in order for us to remove this wall, we're going to have to support this wall here by a, by a temporary wall. So basically we'll build a wall beside it and then we'll take this wall out and the engineers designed or told us what type of beam we're going to need uh, to put here. So we're going to uh, be putting a beam from this corner, scoop this corner here because we know it's a load bearing wall on the outside outside wall so we're going to put a post here we're going to put the beam across here and we know at this point here again you know there's a wall under here and this wall here at this corner uh, there's a wall underneath in the basement right at this point so we know this is a load bearing wall right here so at this point here we know it's load bearing so we're going to be putting a beam from this load bearing point to that load bearing point to support the floor joists that are now bearing on this wall. So once that's done, we're going to eliminate this wall and then we're going to have an open wall, an open area here. Now, here we're going to drop the beam down. There's two types of beams that you can put up. You can either put a flush beam where the beam is where the beam is sitting in the floor and the floor joists run parallel or run flush to it so that way there's no drop in the ceiling. So we have a nice flat ceiling. But in our case, we have another beam over here that's already a drop beam and then so when we put our beam beside it this drop beam is going to define the room or the kitchen that we're going to be put in that side all right now because this is a drop beam here we're going to drop the beam here um, hopefully that makes sense to you basically what we're saying is we're going to box this beam in from that corner right straight over to here 
right straight to the end of that wall. And then that's going to define that whole area as a separate room, which we are using as a kitchen. Okay? Now this wall here, okay? Now this wall here we can take out right away because we can see that the floor joists are all going this way and the wall is parallel to the floor joists. So we're 90, well I know I'm 100% sure, but in most cases that, in that case you know that this wall is not going to be a, a load bearing wall <coughs> when it's going perpendicular uh, to the floor joist, sorry, parallel to the floor joist like this wall is. Now, the only thing you have to be careful is sometimes there's a load from the trusses come all the, all the way down to a point load. But in this case, there isn't. So just keep aware of that. But your engineer or your designer, well, not necessarily designers. Designers aren't sometimes engin structural engineers. Your in structural engineer or a good framing carpenter should tell you, be able to tell you. But a good framing carpenter doesn't have the qualifications to actually stamp it and say, yes, this is what you need for this, for this particular situation, this particular load to remove this wall. So keep that in mind. All right. One other thing I want to point out over here. <laughs> All right, so in order for us to eliminate um, this wall here, we weren't sure exactly how this was being supported. Right now, it looks like it's being supported by these uh, posts, and it looks like they framed it in like it's, uh, it has headers here between the posts and these jacks that are holding up the header. But because this beam here is dropped here, and the floor joists are sitting on this beam, um, we're 95% sure that the floor joists that are going this way over top of this beam here are being cantilevered and they're being, the load is being carried from this beam. So basically, whenever, so if you eliminate the wall, the floor joists here are carrying the second floor cantilevered over this beam. Um, cantilevered basically means it's allowed to go over the beam a certain distance as long as you are at least two thirds back behind the beam this way. So we're keep that in mind. It's a little bit tricky to see if you don't really understand it, but your engineer should be able to tell you, or a good framing carpenter should be able to tell you that's what's happening here. So we're going to be taking off these walls and uh, and resupporting beams and posts where there's where we're required to do. So make sure you get all that done before you start taking out walls. All right, so you can see that we've knocked out most of these posts right now. We're just getting back, getting to our uh, last couple here. And you can see what I was talking about here. Now that these posts are gone, you can see how this beam here, this uh, four two by 10 beam that was here, is supporting the floor joist and the second floor floor joist. There's nothing really over above, on top of the floor. There's no walls. It's just a hallway. So that's why we're able to cantilever this. What I mean by that, again, these two by 10s, because they're sitting on there, are able to hang past the beam and support the floor on top. So you can see how we've opened this up now. It looks really good. So uh, I just want to point that out. So let's pop this off. Brody, pop that off. Okay. Okay, uh, off to the next, gonna knock off the header and we're gonna show you uh, the next phase of our demo. Okay, so as you can see, most of our demo is complete. All the, uh, the major uh, demolition is gone. Most of the drywall is gone. Most of the walls are gone. And the flooring has gone. The vanities are gone. And uh, before we go ahead and cut, or before you go ahead and um, cut all the plumbing pipes and uh, heat runs, um, it's a good idea if you can pre-mark them. What I mean by pre-mark them? Maybe down, down on the main floor or downstairs. Uh, we're going to be snipping these off. but. 
we're gonna, it's a good idea to mark them, put some tape on it, and put what it's used for. So when the plumbing uh, contractor, heating contractor show up, they have an idea of which line uh, is used for what, so they can reroute the line to wherever you want to go. So keep that in mind, and uh, I'll show you over here. We're gonna get started our addition as well. So come on over here. As you can see here, just wanted to show you that uh, I'm all excited because as you can see, our excavator just showed up and we're gonna be uh, starting the excavation um, probably next week and we'll be uh, going ahead with that as well. Great. Huh? I can just take tape, okay. Leak up at the very top. This is the uh, venting and the stacks coming down. Okay, drain, drain, stack. See, this is good to do so, you know, in case somebody has any questions too, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Now, this is a heat run, not a cold air, right? Yeah. See, that's the thing, you gotta watch these out. You gotta watch these too, Mike, because some of these are. Some of these are cold airs. Like that's a cold air right there in the corner. Mm -hmm. Or is that a heat run? No, it's a cold air because it's way, it's way up there. Okay. All right. All right. So from upstairs that I just mentioned to you about uh, cutting the line. So all the lines that we've uh, exposed upstairs in the ensuite, which we're going to be rerouting, they're all basically coming. They're all basically, if you look up here, the. Uh, the drains are all coming down to the one to the one section here, and all the copper for the hot and cold water feeds are all coming down. They're all coming down here. So all we have to do is mark the bottom here or mark the top and uh, snip the lines, and then the plumber will know that uh, these two lines and then the drains uh, that are in the basement uh, were all for this area. So that might just help him out in the future. Not necessarily. He may reroute it anyways, but uh, if he can use the existing pl plumbing where it is, it's a lot cheaper for you because there's less work for him to do and less time for him to figure out what's going where whenever you're, whenever you're doing a rental, you know, there's a big chunk of time that's involved where, well, what was this used for? Can we still still use this or can we still use the heat run? Can we still use the cold air return? Uh, can we still use the same electrical? So um, marking them or even taking video cameras like we're doing now, uh, is going to help you in the future, so keep that in mind. Great. Okay. 